Hello, dear listeners. Today, um, I'm doing a solo episode and the title is Why We Need to Heal. I want to discuss intergenerational trauma and why we need to heal from it. So this is a very heavy topic, but it's one, I mean, (laughs) I think in my podcast, the topics are always heavy, but I think they are very important because many of us are impacted by intergenerational trauma because we inherit many things from our families. We inherit genes, foundational life skills, traditions, knowledge, connections, wisdom, identity, resilience, many things we are proud of, many things that make us, many things that we stand up tall and talk about. But sometimes we also inherit behavior patterns, coping strategies that come from pain that were not processed by our parents, aunties, grandparents. Because most of the time when trauma is not processed in families, the people who bear the burden are the weakest members of the family. And most of the time, these are children. So as we gain more knowledge on these things, as we have access to more information, it is important to talk about these patterns. Sometimes we grow up and we suffer from anxiety or depression as adults, and we cannot pinpoint its origin. And sometimes it's because of intergenerational trauma of patterns of hurt that have been passed down and have had impact on us and we cannot. And because there's so much shame around trauma, we think that if we say that, if we even recognize in our mind, not even say it out loud, just recognize in our mind that certain patterns in our families were dysfunctional, It means we are blaming our parents. It means we are saying they are bad parents. And with that shame, we don't even dare recognize certain things. But this is a conversation we need to have because the impact of trauma in families is often minimized because sometimes we don't want to be the ones causing pain to our parents Sometimes parents have sacrificed a lot to give a stand to their children. Parents who immigrate to a new country and they have to survive, they have to cope, they have to go work and make money and sustain children. These children sometimes are afraid to say, my parent was not there. My parent could not come to my parent-teacher meetings and My parent did not come to school for anything that concerned me and it hurts me. It's this memory that I keep and many things even um, that has more dire consequences. So, yeah, as I said, we need to talk about intergenerational trauma. Um, It happens in families, but it's also in a context, you know, it's in a, societal context. It's not only um, families that are, that are affected. Intergenerational trauma can happen to a family, a group of people, a community. Um, there's a lot of research on mass traumas like the Holocaust, the Khmer Rouge killings in Cambodia, the Rwandan genocide. Um, the displacement of American Indians and enslaved men of African Americans. So there's been a lot of trauma in history and it's still ongoing with racism and its impact on, on people's lives. Yeah, and but in the family context, intergenerational trauma comes with a, with a lot of 
secrets, taboos, and things that are not allowed to be said. So the thing is, um, when there are secrets, when there's shame, people cannot speak freely. And so these things, they manifest themselves in other ways. You know, if people are not free, if people cannot speak, they cannot change patterns. They cannot get new knowledge. They are so occupied with hiding their own shame that patterns just get passed down. And kids get born into fears and feelings that don't belong to them, but that shape them and shape their lives and impact their lives. And oftentimes when we've been through intergenerational trauma, um, transitions in life, milestones can be really difficult, like finishing university, starting a new job, having a baby, moving to a new country, being rejected by a partner um, can cause a lot of suffering because we already carry so much. And these milestones, if they don't go well, they can throw us into depression or deep questioning of uh, the meaning of our existence. Intergenerational trauma can also impact our physical health, not only our mental health, through the eating habits we develop, our relationship to food that can become um, a way to cope like many other things. In my family, um, I mean, speaking, yeah, I mean, speaking about things was not very encouraged. And um, as an adult, when I realized the pain, many people in my family, many women in my family went through, I can understand because I always, I always felt and I still feel as if talking about certain certain things um, like putting a name on things can really as if it can cause even more pain but I am for speaking out because all the things we don't see they eat us up it's it's terrible they go from there's this book um, about healing from childhood trauma and the subtitle is when your biography becomes your biology and I definitely think that if we don't talk about these things, they go from being our family history to being pain, aches in our bodies, diseases, you know, and we can prevent these things. And why they need to heal? I think we need to heal first for ourselves because we definitely, definitely deserve to be happy. Even for me saying this, this is so big. I remember the first time I said in therapy, I told my therapist that I realized that I also deserve to be happy. I'm not going to let my life pass me by. I deserve to be happy. And um, this was after I gave birth to my third daughter and I was going to therapy. And for me, that was so big. Because for me, it's encoded in me that I don't deserve anything. And to come to the point where I, I tell myself and I say it out loud, I deserve to be happy because you deserve to be happy. We all deserve to be happy. We, we even that deserving, we, we don't deserve it because we had a degree or we looked like a certain way or we all deserve to be happy and whole. Why? Just by being born. We are worthy just by being born. We don't have to prove anything to be worthy. The fact that you're born and you're breathing, you're worthy of love and life. So when you understand this, ah, wow, it's such a big deal because then you don't have to be chasing things to prove to people and to yourself that you're worthy. You're already worthy. So now the focus becomes how do we how do we uncover the ghosts that we've inherited through our intergenerational trauma so that we don't pass it on? That's where it is important 
for me it became um it's something so 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 important to me to spread the message of this intergenerational trauma because all this wounding all these things from childhood things that we witness in families dysfunctional things fightings beatings slaps uh, um, many things that we witness and there's no explanation for we put we we press it in ourselves we put the lid on it but it's there it's not going away we feel the feelings sometimes when we dare share these feelings we say i remember as if it was yesterday that is the trauma we we look back on things that happened 20 years ago and then we say i remember as if it was yesterday so it means these things have to come out we have to start telling them out loud we did not come to this earth to serve the purpose of our parents we came to this earth to be ourselves our parents um they gave us a lot but it is an opportunity when we become adults to look back on what we received and look at some dysfunctional patterns and see how we can unlearn them and learn new ways to be i i really believe it so how do we how can we heal from intergenerational trauma there's one good thing i can say is that healing healing um from trauma is possible but it's not something you do in one week one day or one month it will be an ongoing process i know for example that for me my healing would take a lifetime that is i could be fine but i always i'm always a bit on my guard not to fall into dysfunctional patterns not to fall into negative thinking not to fall into my cycle of rumination and things like that so that's why i say it's um, it will be a lifetime journey but it's a beautiful journey because i see a few years back where if just the the idea that someone could hear me speak these words i'm speaking today i think i would have passed out it would have been just just the idea of it would have killed me that someone knew i had feelings i had negative feelings so we keep working at it and it becomes easier every day and for me i am a parent you know i am a parent i have daughters and um i want i want to i don't want to impact them i don't want the same things to happen to them as they happen to me and even though i know that if my my mom for example she knew better she would have done better but when you don't you're not aware of your traumas you you consciously or unconsciously you reproduce what you know because most of the time even when you say i don't want to be like my parents they they were like this i don't want to be that i will be the opposite and sometimes they even try to create in in going the opposite way it's too extreme it can create even more hurt but and even in trying to move away from the from the examples we had we end up exactly where we didn't want to end up most of the time and why is that it's from one the lack of awareness on how to un- unlearn these patterns and to the fact that all the experiences we had in childhood are stored in our brain and so even though for example you were hit as a child and you don't want to hit your child like what other what other memories what other patterns do you have in your brain for that so it takes conscious work for things to be different if you want to break this intergenerational cycles of abuse neglect poverty um illiteracy it takes really a conscious effort to understand the patterns there's a chinese proverb that says the beginning of wisdom is to call something by its proper name and i really believe the same for trauma that um to transform something 
we have to acknowledge with compassion that certain patterns are the fruit of pain, trauma, and oppression. And from there, we can start the work of, um, of transformation. I grew up not speaking um, well. At one point, I didn't have the right to speak. I had to work, sit there quietly, only answer questions if I was spoken to. So I was kind of a spectator of my family life. And we know that kids, they have they, they, they need to be seen, to be heard, and to be allowed to express themselves, to be, to be allowed to be who they truly are, for them to thrive and to be nurtured, to be, you know, acknowledged, validated, and all those things. When you haven't, when you don't know that, it's hard, even though you, you want to do different, it's hard to just get up and do different. So it takes work to unlearn these patterns and then, and then uh, do different. We need to know ourselves. And how do we know ourselves? We can do that through um, working with a therapist, a friend, through journaling, writing, talking, what is more comfortable, but getting to know what do we like, what do we not like, what triggers us, what doesn't trigger us, and to gain that awareness of ourselves that we even know what we feel, because this is a big deal for me. I did not know what I was feeling. I would just be upset. I don't know what is upsetting me. Is it that that post on Instagram that made me feel as if I'm less than? What is it? I wouldn't even be able to pin out, just be in a bad mood. But when we gain enough self-awareness, we know exactly what triggered that feeling that we, we are feeling. We were happy before, and then just now, we are not happy anymore. So what is what is um, triggering that? So that's the... That's, uh, uh, one important point. And also before, uh, researchers thought that the brain, when the brain, uh, when you became an adult, your brain was set, you couldn't change your brain. But the good news is that the brain is plastic. They've discovered that. So it means that if you create enough positive ex experiences in your life, you can actually rewire your brain. So you can create new pathways in your brain. And if you create these experiences many times, many times, and um, you can store new experiences in that bank of experiences in your brain. So when you have now, I don't know, you have to parent your children or you have to enter into a relationship, you have these new patterns of experiences, these new pathways that you can tap into. And this can start to shift things for you. So it's 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 amazing to hear that because there's hope. There's hope. Um, and yeah, there are many practices that can make this uh, this happen. You know, therapy, mindfulness, meditation, journaling, practicing gratitude um, are some of the ways you can create new pathways in your brain. And also breath work. You can like deep breathing um, when you're upset or when you're in that trauma state of uh, fight, flight, freeze. Like you can breathe deeply. Um, you can count like to, to six when you're breathing in and to eight, you have to always count longer when you're breathing out. If you do that a few times, it calms your amygdala and then it brings you to a state of calm already. So um, breathing can really be good. And you can do um, grounding exercises where you, you do the 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 technique where you acknowledge five things you see around you. You acknowledge four things you can touch around you. You acknowledge three things you hear and then you acknowledge two things you can smell and then one thing you can taste. So when you do that, it grounds you in the here and now because I'm a, I'm a big fan of bringing life to the here and now because life is only here and now, actually. It's not in the past. It's not far in the future. So 
everything that we can do to bring ourselves to the present and live life here. I'm a big fan of that, but it's a practice, right? Yeah. So I also believe that we need to tell our stories. We need to free ourselves from shame and um, tell our stories, talk to our family members, discover our family history. You know, it, it brings more compassion when we see our parents as just like, especially most parents in uh, in African families, they think that they have to show their children that they are, they are perfect, they don't have any emotion, and then actually it puts a wedge between the kids and the parents. So like trying to know who your parent is as a human being, it can bring a lot of compassion. Even just asking for, for, for people who have immigrant parents, the, their, their story, their journey, why they decided to immigrate and what they faced when they got to the new country, you can really, really be surprised in the resilience and the, you can have a lot of compassion for your parents and um, and sharing knowledge with them. Even if they don't want to change, you can share with them and then you keep on your path. If you change it, we definitely change all the relationships with people around you. So keep going even though it's not easy. So that was, that is it for today. If you have any feedback, any questions, um, you can always find um, me on in, on Instagram at overcoming your story podcast no overcoming your story so you can send us a dm or go on the website miriamjoku.com where you can send us an email so till next time bye for now